In this section, I'm going to be discussing the precise definition of a limit. So, so far we've talked about the idea of a limit. So let's look at the following example. Um, if we're interested in finding the limit as x goes to 1 of some function here, 3x plus 2, we've seen that um, using our limit rules, excuse me, x goes to 1, um, I can use direct substitution here and find that the limit is 5. But what have we said that this means so far? Well, we've said that this means that as x gets close to 1, f of x gets close to 5. Okay. So we have this idea of a limit, but to prove this, and get a more, sol um, more solid mathematical um, foundation for um, the definition of a limit, we need to make this idea of close more precise. Okay, so let's continue thinking about this example um, as we try to move towards a more precise definition of a limit. So our goal here is to prove that the limit as x goes to 1 of 3x plus 2 is actually equal to 5. So one way of um, thinking about this is by talking about um, closeness in terms of a particular value, a particular distance that um, our function 3x plus 2 would be from 5. So we can start by asking something like how close does 1 um, need to be to x, excuse me, how close to 1 does x need to be so that our function 3x plus 2 differs from 5 by less than 1 half. So in other words, we want the distance between um, f of x and 5 to be smaller than 1 half. So when we're talking about um, our function here differing from 5 by less than some value, or we're talking about closeness, um, we want to measure the distance between two values. So what we're going to need to use here is absolute value. So note that we can measure distance between two numbers using absolute value. Okay, so we have that the absolute value of x minus 1 tells us the distance from x to 1. Remember that the um, absolute value is always going to be a positive number. You can also think about the absolute value as telling us the magnitude of something. Um, so it's not telling us the, the direction of, of um, where x is, whether x is smaller than 1 or less than 1, but just how far away from um, 1 that x is. So just to help you think about an example, let's say x is 4, okay, then let's see, 4 here would be distance 3 from 1, but there would also be another value that's distance 3 from 1, and that would be negative 2. So if we show some tick marks here on our number line, I see that negative 2 is also distance 3 from 4. Okay, so this absolute value would capture um, both of the, these, these different values. And if we're interested in this distance, x's distance from 1 being, um, for example, smaller than 3, we would say that everything in this interval, all the x's in that interval, um, have a distance from 1 of less than 3. So I could write the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 3. We can also say that f of x minus 5 in absolute value gives the distance from f of x to 5. Okay, so this is some helpful notation for getting um, towards our precise definition. So what's our goal? The idea of our goal is that we want to find a number which we're going to call delta. So this is the Greek letter delta 
here. We want to find this number delta so that if the distance between x and 1 is smaller than that number, so that's telling us how close x needs to be to 1, it has to be um, closer than um, delta units away, then the absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than a half. Okay, and when we write this down here, we are excluding where x is equal to 1. Okay, so this is some of the idea. So let me write this question for us on the, the next slide. Oops. Okay, so here's the, the statement of our problem. If f of x is equal to 3x plus 2, we want to find delta so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus 5 will be less than 1 half. Okay, so we reformulated our statement about x minus 1 being less than delta with x not equal to 1 as this, since I know the absolute value will be um, always greater than or equal to 0, and if I want to exclude the case where x is 1, um, then I'm excluding the case where this absolute value could be equal to 0. So I'm saying that it's strictly greater than 0, but less than delta. So in words, we can also say that if the distance between x and 1 is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and 5 will be less than 1 half. So we're trying to find what that value delta has to be to make this statement true about f of x being no more than 1 half away from 5. So the way we do this is we start by doing a little bit of scratch work to kind of figure out what delta needs to be. And then we, we answer the question in a more streamlined way. So our scratch work over here involves thinking about what we're working with here. I've got the absolute value of f of x minus 5 where f of x is 3x plus 2. So I can write this now as 3x minus 3, and then I can use a little bit of algebra. So I notice that I can factor this 3 out, and I get the absolute value of 3 times x minus 1. Now, one of the rules that we have with absolute value is that the absolute value of a product is the product of the things inside the absolute value. So I can say this is the absolute value of 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1, and the absolute value of 3 is just 3. So I have this quantity here. So I've got this equivalence, and note that if we want this quantity here, equivalently this quantity down here, to be less than a half, so we want this 3 times x minus 1 in absolute value to be less than a half, meaning we need this absolute value of x minus 1 to be less than a half over 3. In other words, to be less than 1 sixth. So we see that it turns out we need our delta to be 1 sixth for the inequality that we want for the distance between f and um, 5 to be less than 1 half. So over here we write our, our answer, starting by saying we want to use delta to be equal to 1 sixth, and then we're going to start with our if, what we're um, assuming to be true here. So if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 sixth, then using this information, I can say that f of x minus 5 is equal to 3x plus 2 minus 5. You see we're doing the same thing that we did over here, but now we're doing it um, in the, the proper order, and this is going to lead to us being able to do um, our proofs um, in the right way. So this is 3x minus 3, 3 times x minus 1, and now using this information here that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 sixth, I can say this is less than 3 times 1 sixth, so I can conclude from this work here that the absolute value of f of x minus 5 is less than 1 half. So we've shown that, so now I can just write a concluding statement, if 0 is less than, the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 1 sixth, then f of x minus 5 is less than 1 half. Okay, so we've gone about finding delta and then showing that this statement is true for that particular delta.
Okay. In words, we can also say that this is telling us that if x um, is with within a distance of 1 sixth from 1, then the function f will be within a distance of 1 half from 5. So it might help to also um, take a look at what we've just shown here in terms of the picture. So here I've got my graph, y equals 3x plus 2. This middle dot is my point 1. Remember, I'm trying to um, prove this statement here. And I've started um, looking at um, proving this by considering a particular case. So I've shown that if our x minus 1 is less than 1 sixth in absolute value, then f of x minus 5 is less than 1 half. So this is saying, remember, that x is a distance of 1 sixth from 1. So it's saying if x lies in this interval down here from 1 minus 1 sixth to 1 plus 1 sixth, then 5 here, or our function, will lie within 1 half of 5. So remember, this is our, our function along here. 5 is here. So if x is within here, then the distance between f, or our y value here, will lie in this interval between 5 minus a half and 5 plus a half. Okay, so we've set up, um, in order to get this certain error tolerance, I need this certain, um, let's see, distance between x and um, the value that I'm approaching 1. Okay, so let me say a little bit more here. So in this example, 1 sixth, our delta value, or excuse me, not 1 sixth, 1 half, is what we call our error tolerance. Okay, it's, it's how close we're requiring f to be to 5. So this error tolerance we'll see in our general definition will be called the Greek letter epsilon. Okay. And we could, in this example, consider smaller and smaller um, error tolerances and find the required deltas to um, give those error tolerances. I could require the distance between um, f and 5 to be less than 0 0.001, and then I'd have to find a, a much smaller delta to make that happen. But to prove the limit, we need to be able to get the distance between f and 5 for this particular limit to be smaller than any epsilon, any positive number, or any error tolerance that we could pick. Okay, so not just for particular epsilons like 0 0.05 or 0 0.01 or 0 0.5 like we have here, but for any epsilon. So that's what our general, um, excuse me, what our definition is going to say. It's going to be in terms of um, a variable epsilon. So let's see what the definition looks like. So our definition, precise definition, says that if um, f is a function that's defined on some open interval that contains a, the value that our limit is going to approach, um, and perhaps the function isn't defined at a, then we can say that the limit of our function as x approaches a is l, and we write this notation. And what this means um, in terms of our precise mathematical definition is that this limit is true if for every number epsilon, in other words, every error tolerance, for every number epsilon greater than zero, we can find a corresponding number delta greater than 0, so that if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, in other words, so that if x is no more than delta away from a, then f will be no more than epsilon away from l. Okay, so a couple notes here. Epsilon, again, our error tolerance. And our delta depends on epsilon. So a smaller delta is needed 
for a smaller epsilon. So if we want um, f, uh, that, excuse me, the distance between f and l to be less than some very small value epsilon, we're going to need the distance between x and a to be less than some even smaller value um, delta. So we'll see that when we look at this um, example in the context of this um, complete definition where we're looking at finding of a delta that will work for all epsilon, um, we'll see that for our example, we need delta equal to epsilon over 3. So we're going to work through um, this example um, and show how this proof is going to go in the case of an arbitrary um, error tolerance epsilon. But in general, what we'll notice in these problems when we prove it is that delta is going to be some, um, let's say, function of epsilon. It's going to somehow depend on epsilon. It'll be some multiple of epsilon or um, some fraction of epsilon like we see here. Okay, so we'll be looking at this um, more in class. This is just to give you an introduction to some of the ideas that we're going to be talking about. Um, please let me know if you have any questions.